The anti-skid system automatically controls the brake pressure and plays a crucial role during the landing phase. But the anti-skid operation changes as the aircraft slows down and skidding conditions are no longer a serious threat. The brake system control unit receives the wheel speed sensor signals from the 12 main landing gear wheels. It also receives the ground speed data from the inertial reference system. The brake computer uses the data to control the anti-skid functions. The touchdown protection ends after the initial wheel spin-up and the hydroplane protection is disabled below 50 knots ground speed. When the average wheel speed drops to 45 knots, the brake computer activates the taxi brake release function. The aircraft has three independent hydraulic systems. The right system operates the normal brakes, and the center system provides alternate braking when the right system pressure is unavailable. From the first chapter of the series, we know the brake pedal application operates the brake metering valves. The metering valve sends the metered pressure depending on the pedal force. Less pedal force results in reduced metered pressure, and full pedal force results in maximum applied pressure. The metered pressure operates the anti-skid valve module, and the pressure reaches the brakes. The brake computer controls the anti-skid valves to prevent skidding. It maintains the desired brake pressure by releasing the unwanted pressure through the anti-skid return line. To control the anti-skid valves, the brake computer must know the metered pressure being applied. This information is provided by the metered pressure transducer. The applied metered pressure moves the diaphragm inside the transducer. The brake computer measures the resistance to calculate the current metered pressure. Resistance is inversely proportional to the pressure. As the pressure reduces, the resistance increases. With the help of variable resistance, the computer knows the exact metered pressure being applied. Whenever the metered pressure changes, the control pressure changes. During skid control operation, this will drastically vary the brake pressure. Therefore, the brake computer will adjust the valve position accordingly to maintain the brake pressure near the calculated skid threshold. If the applied metered pressure is below 1800 PSI, the brake computer assumes the aircraft is being taxied and completely releases two brakes on each main landing gear. The aircraft uses multiple disc carbon brakes. The carbon brakes are selected because they excel at higher temperatures. The service energy range refers to the temperatures at which the brake operates during the normal landing phase, where brake performance is crucial for safety and control. Within this range, the carbon brake offers high friction with less brake wear. The brake wear increases rapidly if the temperature exceeds the optimal range. High energy braking is only used in emergencies such as high speed rejected takeoff. The disadvantage of using carbon brakes is that when the temperatures are in the low energy range, the brake wear is relatively high. Considering a carbon brake service life, approximately 80% of the wear takes place in the taxiing phase and 20% in the landing phase. If we further divide the taxi phase, 78% of the brake wears down while taxiing out and 2% while taxiing in. Let's analyze both situations. Once the aircraft lands and the brakes are applied at a higher wheel speed, the temperature immediately rises to the optimal range and provides the best braking performance. As the aircraft slows down and enters the taxiway, even though the speed is reduced, the brakes are still hot. Therefore, the brake application during taxi-in is performed at a higher temperature, resulting in less brake wear. During taxi out, the aircraft starts and operates at a lower speed. Brake application during this phase does not reach the optimal temperature range, and the brake wear increases. Additionally, the higher number of brake applications for turning and holding position maintains the brake in the high wear zone. Repeated brake application outside the optimal range increases the wear on the carbon brakes. To counter this, the Boeing 777 uses the taxi brake release function. Each time the brake pedal is released and reapplied, the brake computer keeps changing the set of wheel brakes for the taxi brake release operation. This ensures all brakes are selected for the brake release function, and they wear down approximately at the same rate. The skid control function will continue to work on the applied wheel brakes. If skidding does take place, the brake pressure will be reduced by operating the respective anti-skid valves. Locked wheel protection is also available. If a wheel locks, the speed of the taxi brake released wheel will trigger locked wheel protection. 
The brake computer controls the anti-skid valve, releases the brake pressure to allow the wheel to spin up again, and then gradually reapplies the brake. Releasing one-third of the brakes does reduce the overall braking force. However, two-thirds of the brakes that are applied provide sufficient braking power for taxiing. When the pedal force is increased and the metered pressure goes above 1800 PSI, the computer reapplies the released brakes. This ensures the braking force increases to help perform an emergency stop on the taxiway. If the brake pressure drops again, the computer will release the same brakes that were previously used for the taxi brake release function. Releasing the brakes on the same axle maintains a symmetrical wheel brake configuration and ensures even distribution of the applied brake force. The taxi brake release only works in the normal braking mode and will not function during alternate braking. Unlike the normal anti-skid module, which has six valves and provides independent brake control for each wheel, the alternate anti-skid module has four valves, out of which two valves control different axle wheel brakes. Therefore, the configuration does not allow the release of the brakes on the same axle. By releasing one-third of the wheel brakes and constantly changing the set, the taxi brake release function reduces brake wear and increases the service life. Speaking of brake wear, each brake assembly is equipped with wear indicator pins. The indicator pin is attached to the pressure plate. To calculate the remaining brake wear, full pedal force must be applied. As the brake pistons move the pressure plate, compressing the stack of rotors and stators against the end plate, the wear indicator pin distance is measured from the guide to determine the remaining brake wear. Over time, as the brake wears down due to friction between the discs, the brake pressure extends the pistons further, and the indicator pin continues to move inwards. However, the brake wear creates a problem for the piston retraction mechanism. When the brakes are released, the return spring will retract the piston. This opens up a significant gap between the pressure plate and the piston. When the brakes are reapplied, the piston has to travel a distance before it makes contact with the pressure plate, and the brakes become effective. This varies the brake response time and performance as the brake wears down, and the pressure plate's distance from the piston keeps increasing. To make things worse, the brake wear could reach a point where the return spring reaches its maximum compression and the piston cannot travel further. After this point, any further brake wear will free up the discs and braking force will be lost. Even with brake wear remaining, the brake assembly has to be replaced prematurely. Therefore, the brake assembly requires an adjuster mechanism, and modern aircraft brakes are fitted with self-adjusting pistons. The piston mechanism, along with the return spring, has a pin, an expander, and an adjuster tube. When the brakes are applied, the back end of the piston compresses the spring, and if there is no brake wear, releasing the brake pressure will allow the spring force to return the piston to its position. With recurring brake applications, as the brake wears down, the applied brake pressure will extend the piston further. When the piston moves ahead due to brake wear, instead of compressing the spring, the back end of the piston pushes the adjuster tube forward over the expander. The tube expands and slips forward into a new position. When the brake is released, the spring force can only retract the piston just enough to free up the brake discs, but not back to its original starting position. This ensures the piston maintains a similar clearance and braking performance as the brake discs continue to wear down. Even if the indicator pin reaches the brake replacement position, the self-adjustment mechanism ensures the piston stays close to the pressure plate and the brakes remain effective when applied. When the average wheel speed reaches 25 knots, the anti-skid system disables locked wheel protection. Skid control is switched off at a wheel speed of 8 knots and the applied metered pressure will reach the brakes. The taxi brake release is available as long as there's a positive wheel speed within 45 knots. If the applied metered pressure goes below 1800 PSI, the brake computer will release two wheel brakes on each main landing gear. The taxi brake release function will end when the aircraft stops moving and the released brakes will be reapplied. Now the brake operation is purely hydromechanical without any anti-skid function which means the brake pedal command directly controls all the brakes and their pressure. This will allow us to set the parking brake. Now let's see how the brake pressure returns to the right hydraulic system when the brake pedal is released. 
When the pedal moves to the neutral position, the metering valve operates and connects the system return line to the metered pressure line. As the metered pressure is released, the control pressure drops and operates the anti-skid valves. The higher brake pressure pushes the spool and is connected to the anti-skid return line. The brake pressure is released through the anti-skid return to the right hydraulic system. Thanks for watching.